What's up guys, HCZ here, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we're taking a look at one of the decks that got huge support from Power of the Elements, and I know that this is one of those decks that a lot of people have already been enjoying playing before the new support, but now that we've got two new cards, the deck is finally able to compete at the tier 1 table. So today we're taking a look at Exosisters. This is kind of the Anna meta deck of the format, because it has ways to basically deal with any type of graveyard effect. It can also main deck cards that are very suitable for anti meta decks, because we know that another notorious very controlly type of deck was playing one of those cards that it basically got it infamous for and this is another deck that can play this card so we're gonna take a look at exactly how this deck functions the cards it can play to combat the meta and the playstyle it needs to follow so before we begin if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content and now let's get to the deck profile so starting off with the exosister monsters we have three copies of the new monster we have three copies of exosister martha now this card makes the deck this card is the one card combo that the deck desperately needed because before in order for the deck to do anything without combining two or more cards was basically relying fully on your opponent to move a card from the graveyard and it was a play that you could only do basically during your opponent's turn by chaining a trap card or a quick play to get a monster when your opponent is trying to move something from the grave and that's how you could basically summon an Xyz monster for free but this card on its own gets your rank 4 so if you control no monsters or if you control only Xyz monsters you special summon her from the hand and then you special summon Elise from your deck it locks you into Exosisters, but it doesn't matter too much because the deck does have tools in basically its own Xyz monsters to deal with pretty much anything. So this card being a one card rank 4 Exosister means that you can start your plays, you can summon Mikaelis, you're gonna search one of your cards, and then basically you can get another monster on the field. And the thing you want to do with this deck is basically sit under Magnifica, especially turn 1. And it's one of those decks that it has a kind of slow start, but it starts getting out of control the more your opponent is trying to play, because you get more monsters on the board that give you disruptions, but also give you pluses. So this is why this deck is really really good because all of its monsters give insane value Mainly it's extra deck monsters the main deck monsters are mainly here to facilitate those extra deck monsters And this card right here is what makes the deck actually being able to play at the tier 1 spot Because before it did not have the consistency to do what it needed to do But now it finally does now for the rest of the exosister monsters We have three copies of exosister release this card is the one that special summons from the hand itself If you have an exosister on the field now the thing about exosisters is that they go with pairs usually before we have only four monsters so they went basically with two and two pairs martha works with elise for some reason but it doesn't matter because you're gonna max her out because she's one of the good ones if she worked with irene then that would be a problem because irene is the one that you don't really want to play it more than one but elise is a great card because she's an extender and also when you use her effects if you have the counterpart so if you have stella once you special summon her you gain 800 life points and this is important because the spells and traps drain you 800 life points in order to activate them so these are basically to balance out the life point payment and in time you can win games with this deck because of these cards because you can start with only the monsters and if you don't activate any spells on drops you're going to be up in life points so you can win in time with that so all the exorcist monsters have effects that basically when your opponent moves a card from the graveyard you can insta exceed one rank four monster on top of them so all the exorcist monsters have effects that when they are exceed summoned and they have the once per turn effects martha is the only one that doesn't rely only on your opponent moving cards it's if you move a card from the graveyard as well so she's much more easier to use but the thing is, Martha is never going to be on the field on her own, because you basically use her with her effect to summon an Elise, so you can always make an Xyz without her using her effect. But if, for example, you are out of Elise in your deck and you normal summon Martha, then you do have a way to basically get her effect off without relying fully on your opponent. But yeah, the rest of the Exorcist monsters are the ones that you want to either summon with her own effect or the spells and traps in order to make Xyz monsters. And the best thing to do with this deck is if you're playing against a deck that moves cards on the graveyard, you can use your traps and your quick plays to as a chain link of the the effects that would move a card from the grave and then that means your opponent can't do anything about because they've already activated the effect and you basically get an Xyz for free during your opponent's turn and you can devastate them with her effects. We have three copies of Exosister Stella, she's the one that special summon from the hand, she works with Elise, if you special summon and you have Elise on the field, you gain 800 life points, same thing if your opponent moves a card from the grave, you can just slam her an Exosister rank 4 on top of her, really really good card. We have two copies of Sophia, now Sophia is a card that does give you some kind of advantage but the thing is that she doesn't really do anything on her own because she's not an extender she doesn't special on the hand you need to summon her with another effect and basically what she does is that you can just draw a card if you control an exorcist or monster so she's a plus one but the thing is you don't need to have on her own in order to be able to do stuff because martha is the one card combo elise and stella are extenders this card needs to work with another card in order to get this plus one effect and also she works with basically the worst exorcist in the deck so you don't really need to play more than two because she's a card that if you see it with another card it's 
fine. If you don't see it, it's also fine because you just played for the name, and it's also why we play one copy of Exo Sister Irene. She's the one that works with Sophia, and she's the one that draws you a card and basically bottom decks one Exo Sister card from your hand. And this is why this card doesn't do anything on its own again, and it's not even a plus. So you don't need to play more than one of this card. It's just here for the names for cards like Vadis and Pax in order to have the extra names because if you play only Stella and Elise, if you run out of them, then you won't have plays. So you need to play more monsters, and especially since the monster count is still very low if you don't max them out, and which you shouldn't max them out because you're gonna brick on them in your hand, but you still wanna play some number of them in order to be able to have monsters to special summon with Stella from the hand, and monsters to normal summon to go for Elise from your hand in case you don't open Mars. Now let's go into the hand traps. This is the big part of the deck. This is one of those decks that can play so many hand traps because it does have a lot of consistency tools. Martha is a one card exceeds, Vadis gets you two monsters for your field during your opponent's turn, Pax is also a searcher and a special summon in a quick play card, so you do have a lot of cards that can do a lot of stuff on their own, so you need to play a lot of hand traps because this is a tempo type of deck. It's not a deck that is going to OTK you or make an unbreakable board. It's a deck that is going to outgrind you and outresource you, and hand traps always help with that. So, the first card we're playing is three copies of Dimension Shifter. This is the card I was talking about. Flanderies is also another notorious deck has been playing this card for pretty much ever it's got released, and this is a card that makes perfect sense in this particular deck. The fact that your opponent is not going to be able to put a card in the grave to move from the graves for you to use the Xyz summon effects of your monsters doesn't matter too much. You don't want to rely on your opponent as much as possible. This is not just for this deck, this is a basic mandatory rule for Yu-Gi-Oh! You don't want to rely on your opponent for cards, so this is why the deck now has ways to be very proactive and not just reactive because before it was very react deck, and also it has other ways to make sure that your opponent is not the one that needs to do something in order for you to play during your opponent's turn. Fortunately, there is a card to do that, so this is why Dimension Sifter, it's a card that in the right matchups, it's basically going to be a blowout. If you draw this, you're going to win the game unless you're playing against Sprite, which is a deck that doesn't really care uh, for Dimension Sifter, but if you're playing against Zero Laments, they can't do anything. If you're playing against any Brandy type of deck, it hurts a lot. They will not be able to activate even if, uh, Mirror Jade's effect in order to be able to banish, they will not be able to float with Albion in order to get a Brand in red. This card is really, really good in a lot of matchups, and since the deck doesn't care about its own graveyard, then obviously we're going to play. For the rest of the hand traps, play three copies of Ash Blossom, because it's a most generic hand trap. Again, Branded Fusion is still a thing in the format, so as long as it's going to be at three, then Ash Blossom is going to be probably the best hand trap in the format. We play three copies of Ghost Ogre. Now, this card here is not just for the adventure packets. It's one of the main reasons, yeah, but this card is really good against Sprite as well, because Gigantic Sprite, in order to summon from the deck, it needs to detach a monster from an Xyz monster they control, and it does not detach for cost. So if you Ghost Ogre it, when your opponent activates its effects, you can just destroy the monster, and they are not, they're not going to have another Xyz monster, because I doubt they would have gone out of their way to summon a second Xyz monster before they activated Sprite, the Gigantic Sprite's effect to summon from the deck. So not only do you get rid of the monster, but they don't special summon from the deck. So Ghost Ogre is really, really good, not only against the adventure packets, it's really good against Sprite, and it can be useful against Punk as well, because if you hit Zeamin, they will not have the three, the level three monster to go for Chaos Ruler, unless they drew into another teleport, which is not very likely. So yeah, this card in the following format is really, really good and definitely main worth. We have three copies of Effect Veiler. Basically, this card is here for mainly Sword Soul, because the thing about Sword Soul is that it's a deck that can do what this deck does, but kind of a bit better, because it does put more pressure on the board than you. This deck does have more lockdown effects, but Sword Soul is a deck that once you put it against this deck, it's a deck that can outgrind you and basically get rid of your monsters very easily, so you need to play a lot of hand traps in order to fight Sword Soul, and Veilers with Ghost Ogres can do the trick. And this is why we also play three copies of Infinite Impermanence, basically the same reason. All of these cards have applications against Tier Elements, against Sprite, but you need to play the most generic type of hand traps against a lot of other matchups as well, because at the beginning of the format, where we don't know exactly what's going to be the best deck, we're only speculating that Sprite is going to be the best deck because of what we've seen in the OCG, but maybe people will figure out different stuff in the TCG here, so we're gonna have to wait. So you need to play a plethora of hand traps in order to be able to combat all the random decks that you're going to be facing. For the spell cards, we have three copies of Exorcist Packs. This card is absolutely amazing. Basically, any search card that we get gets more ridiculous every single time. Remember Bird Call? This is basically a Bird Call, but it's a quick play. So you get a search. If you have the counterpart on either your field and the graveyard, you get to special summon the monster you searched, and it's a quick play card, so you can chain it on your opponent's effects that they try to move from the grave, and that means that you're going to get a free Xyz during your opponent's turn on top of half the search. So yeah, this card is absolutely amazing. Definitely a three of We play one copy of Exosister Amen. Now, this card is here to break the deck's reliance on your opponent's moving cards from the graveyard just a little bit more. Martha does it already, but having a searchable target that basically turns your monsters to Exorcist or Xyz monsters means that you don't rely on your opponent moving cards from the graveyard, so you can search this with Mikaelis and basically set it, and because it's a quick play, you can use it during
during your opponent's turn to get another Xyz. And you can also use this during your own turn if your opponent has a monster from that's summoned from the graveyard. I wish we could use this independently during our own, our own turn as well. It would have been a really, really great card at 3 if we could do that because we'll be able to play around Disruption and also get more monsters on the field. But unfortunately, in order to use it during your own turn, you're relying on your opponent. So you're playing just one as a searchable way to get another Xyz on the field during your opponent's turn. We play three copies of Pot of Prosperity. The extra deck is very, very weird in the deck. You don't really have a lot of monsters you can abuse because even though it is a rank 4 deck, Martha locks you into Exo Sister monsters. So it's not like you will be able to summon generic rank 4 monsters other than Exo Sisters a lot of the time. So you don't really care about the cards you banish. You already play multiple copies of all the Exo Sister Xyz monsters and you're not even going to use all of them in every single duel. So Prosperity is very easy to use in the deck. You don't really care about banishing six monsters and it's very important to find Martha turn one and maybe even other cards that can help you proceed to your combo if you already have Martha. So yeah, this is why this card is really, really good at the deck. If you cannot afford it, then you can basically fit in another hand trap or maybe even main deck Dark Ruler no more. The thing I have issues about Dark Ruler no more in this particular deck is that this deck cannot really deal with the board very consistently. You can maybe banish one monster with Mikaelis and then maybe run over another monster with Battle, but it's not a card that can help you break a board. I mean, Droplet is much, much better in this particular deck, but the problem with Droplet is that against Splite, if you Droplet them, then you have to play around hand drops as well, so it's not like you will have enough cards in your hand to do so. So this is why Prosperity is a really good card in the deck. But again, if you don't have it and you have another alternative, maybe fit another hand trap, maybe even Gamma can be a decent card, or maybe even main deck Dark Ruler no more, and see how it goes for you. And the last spell is one copy of Call by the Grave because it's an absurd card. For the traps, we have three copies of Exorcister Vadis. This is the one that basically special summons an Exorcist from the deck, and then you get some of the counterpart again from the deck as well. So a card that summons two monsters, and if you can chain this on an effect that your opponent activates to move a card from the grave, it means that you're going to get two Xyz monsters with just one trap card. And the Xyz monsters are either removal or negate or they lock the graveyard. So depending on the matchup, you can summon the Xyz monster you want and destroy them. Against Steel Laments, you have a card that says that your opponent cannot activate cards in the graveyard, so you basically have an inherent Abyss Dweller, which just destroys the matchup completely. You have Mikaelis to banish cards, you have Jibrin to impermanence cards, you have a Sofiel basically being able to, your opponent will not going to be able to special summon from the grave in case they're playing a deck like that. It's a really, really good trap card that even if your opponent does not really move some from the grave, special summoning two monsters and then if you have Ament, you can basically get another monster for free without riling on your opponent. So yeah, it's a really, really good card. It suffers back the monsters you summon during the end phase, but it doesn't matter too much because you can use this even during your own turn to get another monster. Yes, it's another card that locks you into Exo Sisters, but it doesn't matter because it's still a one card rank four, in at least because it gives you all two monsters materials in order to summon a Mikaelis and then you can search a packs, get more extenders, and keep going. And the last card in the main deck is another card that we got in Power of the Elements, and it's Exo Sister Litania. We're playing two copies of this card. It's not a card that basically proceeds your game state, it's just another disruption. It can proceed your game state in a weird way because you can basically exceed summon an Exo Sister monster using monsters you control during your own turn. So if you combine this with a Vadis, then yes, it can get you a plus because you get two monsters on the field and then use this card to succeed summon. But the thing is, this card is mainly here to banish more cards. So if you control only Exo Sister monsters, you can target a card your opponent controls or they have in the grave and you banish it and then you can either Xyz summon a monster or if you Xyz summon previously this turn, you can banish another card your opponent controls and the second effect does not target. So this is the effect that you're going to be going for most of the time because you're already going to have an Xyz monster on the field regardless. So if you use Ament and or if you use Magnifica during your opponent's turn, you can Xyz summon without relying on your opponent moving a card from the grave so you can use the extra banish effect. This deck can basically ban banish like four cards during a single turn during your opponent's turn. You can banish two cards with this card, you can banish one card with Magnifica, and then by using Magnifica's effect you can summon Mikaelis on top of her to banish a fourth card. This deck can just basically banish your opponent's entire board in a single turn, but unfortunately it can only do it consistently during your opponent's turn, which is the problem with Dark Ruler no more, but if you think that your, if your deck can deal with monsters, if you're not playing with decks like Sword Soul that have really huge monsters, then yes, the deck can deal with a board like uh, totally awesome with a Sprite Elf because they're not big monsters you can run over both of them with attack so yeah against decks like sprite then dark ruler is going to be really great but against decks that have bigger monsters dark ruler in this particular deck does not do too much because the deck does not have ways to get a lot of monsters on the field consistently that can deal with monsters but this card right here it's a two off because it's searchable it's a card that relies on you having a little bit of setup in order to activate so you don't really need to break on it you need to play to maximize on the cards that give you the monsters from the extra deck on the field and the disruptions they're all searchable you can get access to them whenever you want for the extra deck we have three copies of extra sister Mikaelis. This is the most important Xyz monster
monster in the extra deck because he's a monster that banishes on when the turn it exceeds someone, it banishes a monster, and it also you can detach a material to search you an extra sister spell get trap. So spell and trap. So it's a card that gives you a plus, and it's also a card that you're going to be spamming during your opponent's turn every single time. You're going to be summoning this with Magnifica, you're going to be summoning this with your own main deck monsters if your opponent moves a card from the grave. You're going to go through all three copies of this card more often than not. It's a card that basically gives you the tempo you need, it gives you the pluses you need, and it also cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster that special summon from the grave. These effects, these protection effects, don't come up too often. They would come up sometime before in the past with Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer being very, very popular, but now without Anaconda, they, it does, it's not very consistent that your opponent is going to have a monster special summon from the graveyard, so don't pay mind to these effects too much, just focus on the effects that either give you a plus or give you the disruption during your opponent's turn. We play two copies of Caspitel, she's the card that the turn she summon, your neither player can special summon monsters from the graveyard, and she's the one that by detaching a material, she searches exo sister monsters. She's not the greatest because, again, she has mostly the most situational disruption effect that you can think of, because there are not a lot of decks that can summon monsters from the graveyard without activating effects from the graveyard, so the next exes monster I'm going to show you is the one you're going to be summoning most of the time, but I guess against a deck like Infernoid or something, that they summon themselves from the grave without activating any effects, then that's one matchup that this card can completely destroy, but she doesn't have too many implications. You just play a lot of copies of them, you can banish them with Prosperity, and you can just summon them for free during your opponent's turn with all the Exorcist or main deck monsters, and then use them for Exceed Summon again during your own turn. We have two copies of Asophiel, she's the one that's basically going to destroy the tier element matchup. She is basically a Walking Dweller. The turn she summon, either player can activate card effects in the graveyard, and you can also detach a material to target a monster your opponent controls and return to the hand, so she's another card that can basically work as removal during your own turn, but the main thing you care about this card is the fact that it's an Abyss Dweller. So you don't really play Abyss Dweller in this particular deck. You can summon this during your opponent's turn very, very easily, and it's basically what's going to carry you through most of those games. And we play two copies of Exorcist Jibreen. She's an impermanence on summon, and you can basically detach a material to boost all your Exes monsters by 800 points for the turn. She's a card that helps you push, because you do have a lot of ways to get more monsters on the field, especially if you use a card during your opponent's turn and you basically disrupt them, you're going to start your own turn with a lot of Exes monsters, so this card can give you the extra boost in order to be able to go for a game. And the impermanence effect, it's basically the best effect against a lot of random decks that you're going to be facing, because you don't know that if you want to banish a card with Mikaelish or if you want to negate the effect of a normal summonable monster, so she's a good card to do so. We play two copies of Exorcist or Magnifica, she's basically the utopic future Draco that is inherent for the deck. It's the same reason to summon it, you need two rank 4 Exorcist or Exes monsters, and what this card does is that it's not only pressure, because she can attack twice during its battle phase, it's also a double disruption. She can banish a card by detaching a material to just for her own effect, but also you can return an Exes monster that is attached to this card to your extra deck, and then you can summon that Exes monster that you return back on top of this card, so basically you're always going to have a Mikaelis under here, so you're going to get your Mikaelis back into your extra deck, and then overlay Mikaelis on top of Magnifica, so you get two banishes with just one card. And this, being able to pressure, if you combine this with Jibreen, you basically have a 36k beater that can attack twice, so that's 70 damage on its own, so you only need 800 more in order to seal the game, so she's the way you're going to be going for games, she's the way you're going to be disrupting your opponent the most, so you need to play two copies of this card, because it's very very easy to use both during the same duel. We play one copy of Baguska, in case you don't open with Martha, and you open with something like an Elise or a Stella with another Exosister, then you can go into this card, and there are some matchups where this deck kind of struggles, because for example against Brandy Despia, the disruptions this deck has are not the greatest against these effects, because being able to banish your opponent's monsters doesn't matter too much, because if you banish Lubelion, they still get the fusion, if you banish Mirror Jade, you're going to lose your entire board, so if you can make this card turn 1 against Brandy Despia, it can basically destroy them, because they cannot play around this card, so you get your turn back, and then you can start pushing for game, because your opponent is not going to be able to do anything, and this is why this is the only generic rank for that we play, uh, besides from all the um, Exorcist monsters. We play one copy of Zeus, because this is an Xyz based deck, we play 15 Xyz monsters in the extra deck, so we need to play Zeus, because you never know when it's going to come up. And we also play one copy of Utopic Future, with the one copy of Utopic Draco Future. Now, I mentioned that Magnifica is basically the future that you play in the deck, but the thing is, there will be times where you're going to start your turn with two Xyz monsters on the field, and you want to summon this card as soon as possible, in order to be able to play around Disruption, and maybe play around Nibiru if you want to go for a big push, because if you summon Magnifica, then yes, you can get rid of cards, but it's not like you play around interruptions your opponent has on the board, or if they have a hand trap, so this is why there will be some scenarios after maybe activating Vadis, or if you had a monster activating Pax, that you're going to start your turn with two Xyz monsters, and that's when you want to summon Utopic Future Draco at the start of your turn, and then go from there. So yeah, that's the deck, guys. Exosisters are now a really, really good deck. If you're one fan of the deck for 
then I highly recommend picking up the new cards. Yes, Martha is secret, but the thing is, this set has so many good cards that I don't feel like Martha is going to be one of the targeted cards that has a big price, so I don't think it's going to be very expensive. If anything, the older cards are going to be more expensive than Martha, so the deck is not even tier elements or sprite level price-wise, and it's a really, really good deck. It's a very fun deck. It has the tools to basically deal with any type of deck. It's a deck that can get you so much with so little, and this is why it's going to be a really good contender in the following form. So yep, that's the deck, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content, and we'll see you next time.